Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Dmitry Kivochnitzer. Dmitry is the COO, uh, the Chief Operating Officer of Xena Workwear. They're the first to market with a fashionable offering in uh, OSHA compliant work boots for women, something you'd actually want to be seen in. A really cool product. Big fan, a lot of logistics went into it. And uh, Dima, thanks for being on the pod. Thank you, Spencer. And thank you for being one of the few that's ever pronounced my name. Uh, let's uh, let's make sure that you're you are one of the only ones <laughs> that can. Oh man. man, I don't know. It helps that I've no. known you for a while. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Pleasure. A pleasure. No, I'm excited to um, to chat with a robotics expert because uh, I sure as heck am not one. That's fair enough. I mean, the spotlight's kind of meant to be on you here, but I'll I'll talk too. Usually we share it and kind of go back and forth. Mm-hmm. And um, no, yeah, I mean, if you want to know about my work, I'm you happy. You were telling me book. about your, you're telling me about your fancy setup before we uh, before we hit record. So yeah, sure. Might yeah. as might as well continue telling me about uh, about this ridiculous mic setup you've got. So yeah, SK has invested some money in this. Uh, we yeah, it's it's not that much compared to what some some folks are spending. So we've got about uh, two grand on the setup right now. Um, mm-hmm. There's four cameras. Uh, there's uh, a wide angle. There's a forward facing that zoomed in on me with a, a zoom optic. It's 1080p. They all use a standard. This is going to bore the crap out of anyone non-technical. Uh, Probably. They all use a standard called SDI. It's like what they use to shoot the news. So imagine like HDMI on crack. You can send a signal mm-hmm. 300 feet, you know, and then you can send 16 channels of audio, which means like 16 separate voices all at once over that line, you know, and, and it's just going mm-hmm. over a cable. So it's pretty neat. Uh, it's super reliable, um, and um, we were having USB issues in the early episodes, so that's why we spent that money uh, in the computer, which is a dual six-core Xeon machine. Um, pretty insane. Mm-hmm. It's basically a server-grade uh, workstation. It's a big HP fanboy myself. Uh, it's an HP system, and so um, there's two six-core Xeon processors in it. And it's running, um, there's this Australian company that I, I absolutely adore called um, Black Magic. Now you're getting me to nerd out for real. Yeah. And Black Magic, they just make super high-end audio video gear. So they've got this um, AV capture card uh, for SDI that's just, just smoking good. And um, we're running one of those in here. And so we're able to get those four cameras with no faults anymore. I mean, again, the, I mean, the, the viewers are very good. This sounds like... An intense amount of gear. So, is it? I'm not even you, done with what's pl- under are, this table. That's just video. <laughs> are, are you are you planning? You know, planning for the future, planning for to not not well, be obsolete, or are you compensating so for something? This will be episode ten, right? <laughs> and so, our, our plan is to release these on a weekly schedule, and we we have been. I mean, at this point, you know, this one's kind of being recorded ahead of schedule, but. You know, every every uh, Sunday at well, I probably shouldn't say the time because it might change. But we started out with Sundays at midnight. It might be different by the time this gets released. So you All can right. watch it on your work commute if you're pulling a late night. Um, you know, it's kind of impartial. It doesn't matter in your time zone, anywhere you are in the world. It's you know, it's just kind of meant to be just you know out there for everyone. And so that's that's cool. the idea. Well, yeah. set setting the bar high. That's for sure. Thanks. I, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. I mean, I, I try to bring. You know the same principles I have as an engineer to to this podcast, and so I appreciate. That. Yeah, this is the reason why we're not getting into the podcast game. We're going to stick to shoes. <laughs> so let's talk about that. I mean, that's why we you came on here. Um, you mentioned um, your CEO Anna usually does these pods, but as sort of an operations person myself, I wanted to get your perspective on what it takes to actually mm-hmm. bring this stuff to market. And so I know there's a yeah, lot of logistics no. and craziness. And I'll, I'll shut up and let you talk. No, uh, you're right. She she does the she's done a hundred percent of the podcast up until this point. So this is my first and who knows perhaps only appearance on, <laughs> on the pod. Uh, it feels uh, it sometimes feels odd for a dude to talk about effectively what is a female empowerment brand. Yeah, so, I mean let's let's um, let's get the elephant out of the room, right, and just address it. You're right, it's weird. So. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, but, you know, and also, and then this is no secret. So Anna, um, short for Anastasia, um, is my wife and she was the one who had this, uh, had this brainchild years ago. It, in fact, we were, we were brainstorming what we wanted to do from an entrepreneur 
entrepreneurial standpoint, we, um, um, as two project managers, which we are, would do, <laughs> we basically, uh, we, we got a hotel room remotely somewhere away from home, and we just uh, did a bunch of SWOT analyses on, oh, that's the, amazing. on the wall. But you didn't write on the wall um, of this hotel room. You just had a whiteboard or something, right? No, we brought we brought those big um, those big white sheets. Nice. And we just pasted like them all over, style. and we just yeah. So we swatted like four or five different ideas, and we kept coming back to um, this was a major pain point that she had when she worked in heavy manufacturing. Yeah. Is she absolutely hated. She was. You know, with, she was in a professional role. Okay. Well then. She was with Walther, I want to say, or if you can't she say, it's with, okay. Yeah, no, she was with Walther a long time ago. But then, um, when she was in a uh, steel toe wearing capacity, it was it was at Cat. Yeah. Um, Caterpillar. I didn't really yeah. work there. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, she was there as a as a contractor basically, but yeah, she, know what that's like. you know, as part of her role, she had to dress professionally, but then also she'd have to come out to the manufacturing floor quite a few times. Um, so when everyone else was like, "All right, let's go," because they're just in their steel toes all the time, <laughs> she's like, "Oh, can you guys wait? I got to go change," because there's no way that you could be in a meeting. They're fucking doing ugly. Any kind of no, they're they're hideous. They absolutely are. Yeah. Um, and most mainstream companies, because the female market isn't, to be completely honest, it's not huge. So what they'll do is they'll they'll take their men's models, they'll kind of just shrink them down, maybe change some of the colors, and then release them for women. So yeah. I, oftentimes they won't even use a female last, which oh, is geez. ridiculous, because it's well, and men and women's feet are shaped differently. So yeah. Um, that's also not something that. You know, I guess it's common knowledge. Um, I didn't know it. So, so, there you go. Yeah, women's feet tend to flare out a little more, but then they're they're narrower in the in the heel area. Um, so if you don't use a women's last, now it's really uncomfortable, no matter how much room you have. Um, yeah, and so now most companies have started using female last, but it's still they just kind of use the male centric approach. In all of their yeah. design. Well, that's probably partially because of you guys, right? Because you did change the landscape there by bringing this product out. Well, so chronologically speaking, I mean, we've only been around less than two years, so. which is insane to me. I mean, because I don't know. I guess I have eyes. Well, I've worked on a lot of engineering floors, but we're not as prevalent mm -hmm. as I would like there. So that's a good point. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. um, I mean, we do talk to a lot of customers that say, "Oh." I had this idea a long time ago, and it's just, it constantly comes up. Oh, oh, I, I knew that this was a need that needed to be addressed. And I mean, the barriers to entry in this market are so ridiculously high. Interesting. Just because it's highly, well, it's highly regulated. I mean, you're, you're dealing with PPE. PPE has to go through, um, you know, regulated testing. And it's not like I put together a sneaker, it's got four stripes instead of three go ahead and rock it, um, this is slightly different. It's a little more scientific. Interesting. So if you make a stylistic change, you know, that's that's purely aesthetic, but you have the same bones, do you have to re-go mm -hmm. through certification in a, in a lab to be able to have it that? Depends on, it depends on what it is. So like uh, if you talk about mm, a steel toe, one of these guys. Nice. Um, anything that you, yeah, I, I came with props. A carrot top. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you'll dish it back harder. That's good. <laughs> I prefer to be compared to Gallagher, although I will not smash this. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So with with steel toes, you're you're mostly testing for impact and compression. Um, and if that's the only certification that you have, which a lot of steel toes do, just have that then anything that you change below it, meaning the outsole or the midsole or something like that, um, then outsole? you need to, what was that? What, what's an outsole? I, I'm just not a shoe guy, so this is, oh, this is new vocabulary um, for me. I mean, I probably should have come with more props, which is uh, an actual shoe. Oh, actually, I have a, I, I do have a piece. So I have a, um, this is like a cross section oh, cool. of a, um, yeah, of a boot. So if you if you That's think this is like the front of the boot, this is the outsole. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. 
And then the insole and then, is and the, then, the thing. And then on the insole, you, you'll have an insole that goes here. This is there's a lining over the steel toe cap. Um, there's a midsole under that if if you have one. Um, so a lot of times, if you if you want puncture resistant um, protection yeah. so certification, then you're using like steel, but less so. Now usually it's Kevlar. Kevlar um, sounds like a way better material, just from a weight perspective for that. Correct. Exactly, it's lighter. And then, although none of our shoes have PR certification, just because it's not super common, What's super PR? high in demand. But uh, oh, uh, puncture resistance. Got sorry. it. Okay, my apologies. I should have. No, that's that's on me. I'm, I'm a. Oh, it's it's. Whenever I, you I should, talk I shop, shouldn't be you douchey. It. It's it's all good. I, I I both love and hate acronyms because on the one hand. Um, they were super overloaded, like PR public relations, right? For instance, yeah. you know, puncture resistant, you know, and you know, I've seen other ones like POC, proof of concept, point of contact, you know? Yep. And so, yep. I mean, there, there's a bunch of them like that where they're just overloaded. And so I, I hate them from that perspective. But on the other hand, I also like to save time. And so I find myself using them. And so, yeah. Also, it's, sometimes it's funny. A POS uh, <laughs> sometimes point is a point sale. of sale uh, but more often than not, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's that's a pretty funny one as well. Also, you didn't give me any ground rules, so if you need to bleep that out, no, we can square it. I, well, I, I like to keep it kind of like a little bit light, but I mean, I, I think you know we're adults here, and there's an explicit content warning on everything we release on Spotify, just to kind of make it a little bit more free form and and just let people be themselves. Good. Oh, perfect. Um, so anyway, get, getting back to this, so if you're, it, like, it, it, we're considering puncture resistance for our next model, and what we want to do is, like, a flexible form of carbon fiber rather than Kevlar or anything else because it's even lighter. Um, we just need to figure out the, the per unit cost and make sure it doesn't, it, it makes sense to, to actually do that. That's, yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, if you change the outsole, this thing, then you need to retest. Um, on the upper, meaning the, the entire top half of the shoe, if you're making changes, usually not, but if you have metatarsal protection or something else related to it, if you have, if your shoe is supposed to withstand um, electrical hazards, but you change the zipper to something that's conductive, well, now you have to retest. Wait, do you guys make you know? like um, shoes that are meant to withstand electrical hazards? Yeah, so this shoe, awesome. the one that's been destroyed to do that, is electrical hazard certified. That's so yeah. cool. It's like a thousand volts. Like, what what can it go up to? Uh, <laughs> so in the U.S., there's only one um, standard that you have to meet, and it's eighteen thousand volts. Holy crap! Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you. Can it's it's meant to make sure that if you step on a live wire, you're not immediately going to get fried. So a woman working on like high tension lines and that isn't going to get cooked. That's well, not as yeah. probably. I mean, there's still a lot of dangers up there. <clears throat> no, and it's usually if you're in a again if you're in a man manufacturing facility, and you're walking through and you step on an open wire, that's the that's usually what what folks are worried yeah, about. And this is a little bit outside my domain. I mean, I. We have experts we work with that are, are much more proficient in power electronics who would probably be laughing at me, and I'm sure we'll get hate mail if this gets the viewership I want for me misspeaking about, <laughs> you know, the dangers of line person work and, you know, how little I know about, you know, humans getting vaporized up there. <laughs> so it's, it's not my field, not I my domain. I certainly don't either. Um, but it's, it's awesome that Xena is making product for, uh, at least in manufacturing settings, you know, electricity protection. Yeah. That's that's really cool. No, it's it's manufacturing, construction, and any other fields where PPE is required. Um, probably bears talking about the. Um, I, I'm gonna go out on the limb and say you mostly have a male audience. Um, so, I don't know. We, uh, we don't have an audience at all yet. I mean, by the time this episode comes out, we'll see. But to the extent. I want this to be um, for knows? everybody, <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, no, I, I understand you're not, you know, a, a, you know, actively making pro, pro, pro male. What is it? Um, MRA content. Yeah. What, what is MRA? <laughs> this is. This... Uh, oh, sorry, it's another acronym. Uh, men's rights activist. Oh Jesus content. Christ! Yeah, don't associate <laughs> me with that ever. 
No. <laughs> it's like saying like white rights. I mean, it's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'll stay out of that oh, one. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, like we're doing okay. So, I don't need it. So not, not knowing what your, what your listenership is, but, I, you know, assuming that yeah. it's skews toward men. Um, well, it might be because like technical you, fields are pretty male dominated these days. So that, correct. yeah, that follows. And that's, in again, and women are making incredible inroads in them. But the, the most common question that comes up is, um, this seems frivolous. Like, this doesn't, this seems like who, you know, they're perfectly functional, perfectly great Toyota Corollas out there. Like, why, you know, why do you need to be in anything nicer? And <laughs> well, that's clearly you're not talking to a designer with that question, but sure. No. And and the thing is, you know, because of the way that men dress, you know, we, we have an ability to kind of blend and, and really make rugged suits us more um, versus There's nothing you know, women rugged have, about this jacket. <laughs> yeah, except not, not you, not today. Yeah. <laughs> and w w women's outfits run the gamut of what they wear. And so the vast majority of these shoes don't – you can't pair them at all. And there's, there's a, some evidence out there that what you wear impacts how you feel. And if you feel shitty, then you're not going to perform great on your job. And you're just not going to be happy overall. And then we get attrition. And, you know, this, this obviously isn't the leading reason, but it's a contributing reason why women leave the field. Oh, my so God. why, you know, it's something so simple. Um, but no one seemed to care um, because R and D is expensive, and it is There's still a relatively small market. So, that. yeah. yeah, that's the origin story. That's the that's how we became Spider Man. Spider Man? <laughs> no, I get it now. Origins. So my bad. No, thank you. Thank that was you. a bad was a bad joke by me. It, but it it makes <laughs> sense. I it took me a second too. I'm a little slow as well. Um, no worries. It's the whiskey. So definitely the whiskey. I mean, my face is red, right? So like I've clearly been drinking a lot of this stuff, but I'm going to keep doing it because it's kind of fun and we're, we're doing a podcast. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, exactly. But um, I'll enjoy my orange drink. It's a, it's a Michelada, by the way, for those who don't know. Delicious, worth having. It's beer and salsa. I want to say no. What is it actually? It's, well, I don't know if this one actually has it because it's a premix, but it's supposed to be Clamato juice. Oh, you're right. Which is clam plus tomato. I've had I ones think. with salsa in them, but it's it's weird. It's like a little chunky. It's not the best. Like yeah, if that's you go to odd. Guy, I, dump in them no, sometimes. thank you. Yeah, Clamato <laughs> is, is a better fit. I, I dig it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. But your way sounds better. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then, like a Bloody Mary, that's meant to be kind of spicy. So, yeah. This right, so, is not very spicy, but I'll, but I'll take it. Um, it's, yeah, it's no whiskey. I'll put it that way. I mean... Uh, I, want it, I want it to be sharp. This, this is me being on a, on a ketogenic diet because I've been too fat and I'm trying to lose weight. And so I, I've been eating no carbs. And I don't know why I'm telling this to our audience, but since we got on the subject, I'll go into it. Um, whiskey kind of ticks those boxes, and so I've been drinking a lot of straight whiskey lately. And um, mm -hmm. as a result, and you just you just don't drink as much of it, right? So you have it there and and you sip it, but sometimes it's easy to go a little overboard. Anyway, well, that's perfect. Thanks. <laughs> also, congratulations on the uh, on the self-reported weight loss. That's fantastic. Yeah, and no, I appreciate that. It's uh, it seems to be working out. I just I don't know. This this is the one time I sort of did it for me. My motivation is um, honestly just to be sharper at work uh, and, and not just saying that because I'm hoping my customers are listening, but you know, it's, uh, I, I've been getting a lot of fulfillment out of just doing good work for our clients lately. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it, it, it just, it gives me a purpose. And so if I can be better by, you know, practicing discipline in the form of weight loss and exercise and yep. living better, that translates into my management styles and, you know, um, you know, I'm calmer around our people that we work with, and mm -hmm. it, it's just better for everybody I work with, and so that's why I've been doing this. No, exactly. Discipline is a huge, 
I don't know why people don't talk about it more, but when you see someone who's disciplined, when you see someone who, I don't know, works out or has some sort of a skill mastery, it doesn't matter what it is, you're impressed because you know that it took an incredible amount of dedication to get there. And I think we need to talk about it more and celebrate it more. I, I agree. No, it's, it's good stuff. Um, I really like it. I mean, I grew up in a medical family, right? My, my grandfather was a cardiologist. My dad's an orthopedic surgeon. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, I, I grew up, you know, like <laughs> my grandparents and my parents were not afraid to fat shame me, you know, when I would gain a lot of weight. And, th- and this is not going to be a popular outlook and we might have to edit this out, but I'll just say it anyway. Like, I don't think it's an unpopular outlook. Well, I, think. I don't know. I mean, it, again, this is for a broad audience, so I, I don't want to make anyone feel bad about who they are because it's none of my business if you want to gain weight. Mm-hmm. You know, be whatever weight you're at. But for me personally, I find I'm more fulfilled if I, you know, I'm at a certain kind of low weight. No, but, because it, it but just, it, it's a discipline. It, it, it's like you said, it's just an exercise of, you know, showing restraint. But it, makes, and then, it makes sense to talk about that because it's not a, it's not a vanity thing. And that's, and that's the common misconception is that weight is associated with vanity. There's, a, there's an aspect of be. that there. Yeah. But it's it's way more than that. It's the it's the the ability to just ah to kind of just hunker down and discipline yourself. And it, you know, if people think that eating pizza or whatever is happens to be your vice isn't something that all of us have, we do. But that's Correct. the the self control, the discipline mechanisms that fire, and those are very attractive. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's kind of where I'm at. So I'll get stressed at work. I'll gain, you know, like 30 pounds from where I'm at, roughly. And then I'll start to just have alarm bells going off. Like, hey, you're doing this too much, you know. Yes, eating feels really, really good. You know, it is no, no greater also, feeling. Also, 30 than, pounds is a massive swing. What are you eating? Like I said, I'm, I'm cutting out carbohydrates. So I, um, <clears throat> I mean, my... No, I, I'm saying if, if you did eat carbs, which you know normally people do i mean I, like 30 30 pounds is like whoosh, oh i see like, what you're saying i think like a lot of like people a fourth of a person or whatever <laughs> well I, I weigh around 200 pounds give or take so right now i'm at like 195 and then my, my goal weight is like 185 175 depending on how much i'm working out but yeah. um you know i get up to like 215 so to, to go into that and I'm, I'm 511 so i can kind of carry it all right but um mm. to get into that um the reason I do that is, um, or sorry, what I eat that gets me at that weight, um, you know, I mean, I'm like anyone else. Like, you know, at the end of the day, like, if I'm stressed out, I'm talking to clients about incredibly difficult challenges that have never been solved before. You know, I'm trying to, to work on, you know, just complicated systems that span hardware and software. And, you know, you're dealing with people all over the world. And it just gets stressful. And at the end of the day, I mean, it's so desirable to just grab, you know, a pint of ice cream and eat the entire thing or, you know, like get, you know, a, um, you know, a, a <laughs> small pizza and just wolf it down or, you know, like whatever. I mean, I'm not, you know, like the fattest person on earth, but I mean, I have vices that, you know, I'm not proud of and I'm trying to eliminate, but that's, that's where it came from. Um, well, I'm glad that you've got it. You got it locked in. And the nice thing with keto is that it it does bring better mental acuity and sharpness. It's um, I think that's why the the U.S. military actually advocates it for Are you serious? um, yeah, for for their conscripted troops is because it just it makes you into a machine. You you're not thinking about eating. You're not thinking about being hungry. You're really? just executing. So I, I, you might be complaining the so conscripted as far as I know means like like when you make somebody oh. join up like that's like yeah that's like no no you're 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 right that's uh but you grew up in moscow so i'm guessing it has a different definition over there no i was i was more so thinking of infantry but um got it I, okay i assume there's enlisted, a different enlisted. word for it it's enlisted enlisted that's what it is yeah, yeah. I, i've never enlisted. served or anything like that but i have enough friends that are veterans now so i, I get the stuff second hand you you have no valor I have no valor. Well, a, a guy the other day I was at, um, <laughs> it's funny. I was at, uh, I have a USAA bank account, which is a military bank account and you can get it if you're the, how, how, how dare you, sir? How dare you? Well, <laughs> hold on, buddy. 
<laughs> so you can get it if you're the child or the grandchild of somebody that did serve. And like many right. people, you know, in the great generation, my grandfather uh, served in the, the Army Air Force. So he was, um, mm -hmm. I mean, we're Jewish. And so, you know, Jews at the time were pretty much relegated. Don't to rat me out. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> but, but that's, that's what it is. And, and so Jews at the time were pretty much relegated to the Air Force and sometimes the Navy. And so, and, and there were some in the Army as well. I mean, that's not, that's not entirely 100% the case, but the Air Force was pretty Jewish in those days. And so... Um, really? Is that a thing? It is. Well, so like you'll hear Lenny Bruce bits from the 60s about it, where he talks about like, you know, like, you know, Navy Goyish, Air Force Jewish, you know, and, and Goyish is sort of a derogatory term for non-Jewish people. But obviously I hold no contempt for anyone of any, you know, right, religion. I don't, whatever you are, I don't I, care. I, you know, I like, I like how you're, you're qualifying these bits. Well, you got to, right? <laughs> I mean, this is, this is meant for more of a, of a business base, but I think it's an interesting conversation. So it's worth to qualifying and bringing up and, you know, just explaining. No, it. that's true. To which also, audience, I'm yeah. I'm kidding, obviously, about you having a USA, whatever. Account. But but anyway, so the reason I bring this up is when I was in the bank withdrawing some money, <laughs> um, my banker thanked me for my service. I didn't know what he was saying. I thought he was thanking me for being a customer. <laughs> so I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> so I accidentally stole Valor. <laughs> I didn't mean to. It's almost like somebody dropped some Valor and I picked it up, you know, just like, hey, you dropped. Oh, crap. He's gone. All right, I guess. You know, just to hold on to this one. <laughs> yeah, so. Maybe he just thought that you had so much pain in your eyes that you you looked like you served. I mean, that's certainly true, but you know, <laughs> that's a story for a different podcast, I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I, I also I should say no laughing matter, but yeah, it's. it's uh, all right. I, it, I like laughing <laughs> about it. I think laughing makes the pain less painful, and, and so I, I would that's always encourage people to. To, to joke and laugh about their hardship and, and anyone else's for that matter. I mean, that's not going to be a popular viewpoint, but it is what it no. is. I, 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 think, I agree. I think it disempowers um, and just con not contempt, but um, hate. Hate, yeah, tumultuous circumstance. Like just making a joke out of it makes it less, less, you know, less mean. I agree. I totally agree. Cool. That's one of my um, one of my main. I said I said this before, but like if I if I would redo things, I would see if I had what it took to uh, to join the um, uh, the seals. I don't nice. know if uh, I I mean it sounds like hell on earth. So I agreed. Uh, Have you heard about I the boat race? I don't, I don't know if I'd have the mental fortitude to, to handle it because it's all it's mind over body. Um, but I I would have loved to at least have gone through that trial and known you know can I hack it or not. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't have wanted to do it, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, can, I, can, I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, who knows? Well, maybe it'll be for, for, for my offspring one day, if I have any. <laughs> yeah, well, you're probably going to, knowing you. I mean, you seem like you, you're pretty adamant about that, and you've got good reason. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what that means. I, I, I assume you, you have some sort of a, that's a reference to my virility. Which, thank you, sir. I I'm referring it. to conversations you and I have had in the past about, about your family's uh, history and, and the reason you want to keep the name alive. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's on a way more serious note. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's, it's a good reason. Yeah, I know. Uh, speaking of family and speaking of why, uh, why any of us are here. So this, the entrepreneurial journey is not something that was ever in the cards. It's not something that anyone in my family has ever done. Um, it was kind of spur of the moment. I, I shouldn't say that. it was premeditated, of course, but it's been challenging and we're in you know, we're going to be in year two, starting in June. Um, Congratulations! You know, product-based. Well, thank you. Um, so the goal is to is to keep on is to keep on going. Um, we've had keep on growing. It, we've had growth. We've had tremendous oh, yeah. feedback. But with product-based businesses, the, the you know the trick is to kind of to get the wheel spinning fast enough where it can actually roll, yeah. um, and that takes. An, an insane amount of capital, um, 
and it and it constantly takes priming the pump. I'm just going to use all of the uh, idioms that I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but um, but no, it, the the thing is that product based businesses don't hit profitability for um, you know for a long time, and so you need constant capital infusion. You know, making sure that you're um, that you're able to buy inventory, which gets expensive, um, and to, to run everything. So we're we're the definition of a small business. Um, you know, we have four people, and we have this innovative product, which I'm very thankful for. But um, it costs a lot of money to let others know that you exist. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Absolutely right. Yeah. So that's been the challenge is just getting, I don't know, um, getting the spotlight on a niche industry that, um, you know, frankly, doesn't make it into the news very often. Yeah, no, I mean, that's awesome. And I mean, Anna's been doing a great job of that. Um, and, and you're doing a great she's job. Of amazing. That now. Yeah, she, she's she's an absolute rock star. She, you know, she, she uh, I'll talk about LinkedIn for, for oh, a minute. I saw, I saw a new post of yours on there, by the way. It was it was somebody that I hadn't seen modeling your equipment before um, who was Thank you. pretty good in that role. I don't know who that was, but um, yeah, that was... I don't know who it was either. But, that's awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's how you know you're growing as if like you're like, you know, that person's doing great. I don't know who they are, but... You know. Well, I, I mean, at some point, you know, the, the when you have a product-based business, the... Um, the pinnacle, I'll call it, this is my view, the pinnacle of your success is when you can find your product out in the wild <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, I don't know that person, but they're, you know, wearing my thing. Nice. And, uh, and that, uh, that's tough because ours is a work thing and, you know, how, how often are you going to be on a construction site or wherever it is? It's probably not. I mean, if you're um, me all the time, but... You know, that's a different story. I'm a consulting engineer. Well, if you, if you ever spot a pair of Zenas, make sure to, uh, you know, text me the picture. Yeah, I'll, I'll snap a shot. I mean, as long as, you know, it's not weird or doesn't get me in trouble. There's yeah, a lot yeah, of facilities yeah. Don't make no it, photos, Please don't but, make it weird. <laughs> well, it, what it is, is, is basically when, when you go into a facility for a client, a lot of the times you've got restrictions on photographs. And so you want to be very explicit. Yep. You know, it's, it's like... Um, you know, is it okay if I take a photograph, you know, and, and because people have really proprietary process, or I should say companies mm -hmm. have very proprietary processes. And I mean, understandably, they want to protect, like, you don't want people knowing the recipe for Coca-Cola if you're Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. And so, you yep. know, I mean, that's, that's basically it. And so I, I've toured some very sensitive facilities over the years and, and continue to do so where, I mean, you, you just want to be crystal clear about what you're doing before you snap a photo. You know, and, and, you know, if I were to, you know, send it externally to, to our team, you know, I would just have to make sure it's okay with everyone. That's all. But I could, I'm, I'll do it if they're cool with it, you know. I, I, I got it. No, that's, that's awesome. Um, so back to LinkedIn. It's a um, relatively underused platform in terms of, we'll call it social media because that's exactly what it is. Um, they... Agreed. They want to make it a little more interactive. They meaning the company, um, and so their, you know, videos is drastically underused on um, on LinkedIn. We try to post um, video on there. Photos and but but also the content that you post on there is has to be purposeful in a way. It can't be frivolous. Um, and back to Anna, I mean, she's done such a phenomenal job of. Of what, being able to walk that line of not being salesy and and still kind of um, being able to highlight other women and the things that they've done without you know shining too much light on herself and it's been I mean, she she's an absolute rock star. You say not being salesy, but I would just call that expert sales. Um... I think Maybe. sales all too often is categorized as, as not necessarily the most savory of things. And I think the reason that that is, I was looking at um, buying a rental property recently. I want to go super into that story and I ended up not doing it because, you know, certain reasons I won't go into. But basically, I, um, I was looking at doing that and the person trying to sell it to me was very... They were using what I call high pressure sales tactics. So, you know, like mm -hmm. the clock is ticking, 
you know, you can only get this now. Um, you have to sign this agreement. Creating that says a sense of urgency. Yeah, stuff like that. And I think people like that give all salespeople a bad name. And it's, it's unfortunate because I think so many of us are just trying to be honest advocates for our customers. I was working with a woman earlier today. Um, and I won't name her because I, I don't know if she'd be okay with it, but she was just expert at her job, so good. And, and she was selling um, UV printing equipment. And so I was working with her for one of our clients on something. And um, this, this woman was just, I mean, I was grateful that she existed and she was, she was a sales mm -hmm. manager for her territory. Yeah. But I mean, she was just a beast at it. She was a boss at it. She was, she was a pleasure to work with. And people like that need to exist. And so I think sales all mm -hmm. too often gets categorized as, as bad because of people like the person that tried to sell me property. But the woman I was buying, you know, UV print equipment off of, amazing sales professional that I want to give business to because she is an advocate for me. She was honest. You know, she wouldn't try to sell me something that wouldn't make sense for what I, you know, it just, she just came across mm -hmm. as being on the same side of the table. And, and when I sell, that's what I try to do. And I think, yeah. you know, when Anna sells, that's what she's doing. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to speak for her because she's not on this podcast, but that's the well, feeling she, I get. And she also doesn't, sell, I mean, legitimately, she's advocating for people that were in her shoes for every single year that she was in, you know, in heavy manufacturing. I mean, that, that was that was everything that she hated. And now all of a sudden there's, something out there and you know you know whether this crazy adventure that we're on works or not at the end of the day um i mean it'll drive the industry towards oh absolutely you know not not ignoring women 100 percent. that's amazing yeah and i've spoken with like people about what you're doing that i respect a lot just just kind of weighing in and that's the consensus among all of us is that you guys are changing the game forever so I'm I'm hopeful. I can. Um, I, the the hope is that the at the end of this we can. You, you don't want to go to. You don't want to go to your grave not having done something bold and outrageous. Um, I I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's not true for everyone, but I, you don't want to have regret. And this feels like. This feels like going all in on something. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you yeah, are. Whether, whether, if you start a product yeah. startup, you're going all in. I mean, there's no way around that. Like, no matter what it is, yeah. if you're selling shoes, you know, for, for women in the workplace, or if you're selling, you know, yo-yos to, I don't know, people in Idaho, <laughs> like you're going all in because it takes, a, you know, a village and, and a concerted effort to get a product off the ground. I mean, there's, just, mm -hmm. there's no getting around that. You know, it's, it's, it's incredibly strenuous work. And I actually, if you're if you're up for it, I would like to kind of get into some of the logistics and what it took to, to build this yeah. up from a operations perspective. Um, and and I, I I will try to answer your poignant questions as best I mean, as I can. You're the chief operating officer. I would hope you can. <laughs> but what I want to know is, um, you know, when you were getting started, I guess what were some of your challenges? I, you and I spoke, but I want to hear it from you. And, you know, I, how did you solve them? You know, like, I, I'm just trying to kind of get your story f just of, of like sort of the, the non-glamorous. Because here's the thing is like the CEO always gets put on a pedestal and everybody sees that. And that's amazing. And usually they're an awesome person everybody loves. But the COO is sweating <laughs> and dying inside they're, and, they're, and they're in the shedding lives off their life <laughs> to make all that happen. And it's, I mean, it's just the truth, you know, and anybody that... Mm -hmm has worked in a corporate or, or a startup environment in a serious sense knows that. You know, I mean, I have plenty of friends, men and women who have been COOs who have, you know, have just bled, you know, for the company and, and that's the truth of it. And so I guess, what does that look like in your sense, in your case? Thank you, I, I, I appreciate that. I, I will say, because we're so small, it's, everything is a team effort, but, um, but you're right, I mean, from the CEO perspective, you know, it's, it's appearing, it, it's doing public appearances, it's, it's getting, it's receiving the accolades, it's doing the, um, you know, the keynote addresses. And, you know, when we do team meetings on the operations side, it's like, all right, guys, so it's great. Like all of these things, like, uh, oh, this, this new development is coming along and, um, you know, we've got this new marketing campaign going. And on my end, it's like, well, 
today the shoes got shipped and <laughs> we have inventory and nothing is messed up. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I did the thing that needed to be done. <laughs> The, when yeah, I was at not... SpaceX, the COO put it really well. He said, uh, sorry, the COO, the, the uh, CIO, so I was in IT. He said, um, IT is like air. When it works, nobody notices. And I feel like that's kind yeah. of what, yeah. That's, that's exactly it. Yeah. No, that, that, that's, that's perfectly put. And I'm also de facto or CFO, which makes things even more challenging. But um, anyway, this is the, the, the nature of being a very small business. Of course, um, I mean we're we're bootstrapped, you know, small business as well. I mean, <laughs> I feel you. Um, I'll t I, I will. Um, I know what you were getting at in terms of like how how things got started and the, and the challenges, and I I think that's that's interesting to talk about. So, um, from the uh, what feels like an hour ago, the whiteboarding, the uh, swatting session that I talked been. about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the idea generation. Then it was, you know, and at that point, even if you have a great idea uh, or you think it's a great idea, most people don't know, well, like, what is, what is having a business? What does that mean? What do you do? Um, you know, everyone, everyone hears about LLC. Like, ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an LLC. I'm going gonna, gonna to do that. Um, it's actually something I try to help people do if they want to. And I'm just like, yeah, let me, <laughs> let me help you out. Let me give you some steps. <laughs> Well, exactly, and this is what, you know, if you Google it, that's kind of the, the first steps is like, you're going to incorporate. What do you need to be? And then and then you need steps from there. So, um, you know, jumping in all in is challenging. So we started it part-time and developed it into a, into a full-time capacity role uh, for both of us. But, but at the beginning, it was figuring out that incorporation structure. Um, me having an accounting background kind of helped with that. Um, but also, we went through an um, relatively early on an accelerator program for startups. <clears throat> and that really helped to, first of all, I, I got the pitch a lot um, to different investors, whether, you know, whether we were looking for investment or not, which at that point, we didn't think that we wanted and needed it, we we're just going to bootstrap, or try to. Um, but then out of the blue, we got an offer for venture capital funding. Um, and we, I mean, we decided if you're going to, if you're going to do this, you might as well just shoot a ton of money at it and, and get your name out there as quickly as possible. Otherwise the growth is incredibly slow and, you know, you're like mom and popping it for, for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so, so that was that's you know if anyone has a question about venture capital, um, it's on a case by case basis. But um, if you can get an investor that's not going to be overbearing <clears throat> or too demanding and is going to respect what you're trying to do, then it's not a bad idea because you don't know what other competitors like. And there are other female brand safety shoe competitors that we kind of knew were tinkering around in the space. Um, we wanted to, you know, make sure that we, we, you know, we had a head start and we went to market, you know, first, and, you know, all those things. So that's the, the VC angle. Um, <clears throat> when we were developing VC, our first VC, product. VC, venture capitalist, just a. Oh, venture cap. Yeah. It, it, listen, if I use, uh, weird acronyms please stop me and well that's it so i'll just jump in and i'll define the acronym in order to it's just for the viewer's sake that's it i mean i'm i appreciate I, I'm it. following no it's good um so when we were developing the first product um you know not knowing anything about shoes at all it was like well we we need to get them made somewhere we don't know how to do it ourselves so um you know, where can you outsource manufacturing? And it could be local, um, which we looked into, but it's virtually non-existent and, and no one's, you know, white labeling basically. So, okay, well that's out. Um, for, white label, by the way, we, is, can, we, can we define yeah. that for the, for the people listening? So, 
Meaning um, you, so there, there's manufacturing facilities in a whole host of industries that will make a product and it'll be, a, I don't know, it, it'll be a thermos. Or like a, like a okay. USB drive is another good example. Well, so hold on. So, so this is a thermos, okay. right? It has nothing on it. It is just a thermos. This could be a white labeled thermos. And so then you turn it around and it's a Yeti, okay? So, but let's say Yeti decided, you know, we can make a lot more money if we don't invest in the brand, if we, if we sell it to Thermos, which I think is a company. Yeah, Thermos, I believe so. T, yeah, and they can just put Thermos on it, but it's made by Yeti. And so that's what white labeling is. Um, it's, it's making generic products that then another brand can slap their name on and say, this is, this is ours. That's exactly it. Yeah. Sorry to deviate from and the And they example, do this, and they do this for, for a bunch of different, it's not just for you, because then they're a manufacturing partner. It's, we make these thermoses for like 10 companies and they all put their name on it. Yeah, anybody that wants it can put their name on it. Oh. Um, and you know, there's a fee and if you're willing to pay it, you too can own this thermos. Yeah. Um, so that was not possible because, well, first of all, no one, I mean, this concept had never existed before we launched our, our first product, which is a, like a stylish safety shoe. Um, but also, you know, manufacturing anything in the U.S. is prohibitively expensive. And, you know, when you're dealing with something that is not um, like a high-end luxury good, but it's, it, it is a work requirement, um, a lot of employers do end up, um, you know, providing some sort of a reimbursement, but it is partial usually. So you're still paying out of pocket, and this thing can't be insanely expensive. Um, makes a lot so, of sense. They, they do exist. I think like Red Wings makes pretty high price. Red stuff. Wing has a so most of their stuff is made overseas. Actually, also don't quote me because that. Uh, my impression is that it is, but they have a line called the Heritage brand. I believe, which is made here, and again, those retail for uh, let's, let's say three hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. yeah. What even but above that? I I think there was there was a phenomenon for a while where I'm gonna get this wrong, but like a certain country's fashion industry picked them up for a minute as as being stylish, even though they weren't designed for that, and so mm -hmm. it was an interesting kind of accident where the price just inflated as a result. And I'll, yeah, I'm probably there's... wrong on that as well, but. There's quite a few brands that have gone through that where they get picked up by a niche audience, let's say, um, and that that is a path to success. But that's there's no path formula success for is it. Is a great word for it. <laughs> that's true. No pun intended. Um, yeah. But it's like it's like if anyone asks you, like, oh yeah, how do you go viral? Like, no, there's no <laughs> there's no way to define that. If you did, then everyone would be the guy drinking cranberry juice, you know. Anyway, <laughs> I'm glad you get that reference. I actually didn't, but just the idea of somebody drinking cranberry juice in order to go viral is hilarious. <laughs> and so that's the dude I was on laughing. the skateboard uh, listening to. I always say Motley Crue, but I've it's heard not about this. Time. Okay, so I, this this I I'm aware of it, but only by reference. I haven't <laughs> actually seen the video. Yeah. Um, Fleetwood Mac, that's what it is. Um, yeah, the, the dude singing Rumor's Fleetwood Mac, <laughs> drinking the cranberry juice. Again, there's no cracking this formula. It just doesn't, yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the same, again, the, the same with like niche audiences picking up your, um, you know, your product. If it happens, great. Um, so we were talking about prices and manufacturing. So. Sure. I mean, there's we, so much work that goes into operations. It's it's multifaceted. So there's a lot of angles mm -hmm. we can attack it from. So sorry. Just... Well, and this isn't even operation. This is like pre-operations. But again, it's because almost like every, you know, we, we all wore all the hats. Yeah. Um, so then we started trying to figure out well, where did we want to manufacture our shoes, and um, we almost immediately precluded China from the equation just because. And this was, um, this is 2018, so it, I don't think there was, there was growing negative sentiment toward China, 
Um, personally, I've had it for, I don't know, a lot longer, but um, I, I, I just, uh, I don't like these cheaply made goods by, you know, in an area where you have no cultural ties at all and, in, in, you know, there's no, it doesn't feel like there's honor in a business relationship. There's, there's a lot of factors. So it was just not something that, that appealed. Um, so we didn't want to do China or anywhere in Southeast Asia. Um, and so we were, we were looking at different places and um, we somehow randomly landed on Mexico, um, but also not randomly because it's in the same time zone and uh, awesome. flights there are cheap. So, uh, you know, there you go. Yeah. Well, you're also fluent in Spanish, right? Um, you know, fluent is a loose term. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get by. I mean, our, our warehouse staff right now mostly only speak Spanish. And so, um, I, you know, I am able to communicate with them. Uh, I can communicate with 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 their manufacturer you know it there's um there's advantages to at least partially knowing the language same with with anna i mean she she's also i'll call it partially fluent um and culturally speaking it's much closer like mexican or central american culture is much closer to ours than chinese is so yeah that was a that was a big factor sure that's awesome. And I, I um, say you grew up in Moscow earlier, but yeah. really you grew up in Detroit. I mean, you moved here when you were six years old. <laughs> so it was, it was the D, yeah, I feel I, like. I, I, will, I will take all of the uh, the swipes at me for being a Russian with, with uh, in stride. So I have no, no, no negativity <laughs> toward people from Russia. I mean, like, I, I, well, I mean, my Russian, my heritage is Russian. For, so. for full transparency, I, I did try and contact a factory in Ukraine because I thought it would be advantageous <laughs> to, uh, to produce in a Russian speaking country, but it, I don't know, they, they never responded. Um, so. <laughs> but you hit one factory, you got a, you got a multi-source dog. Well, the, the pro, listen, with, I'm listening. If and when, if and when you ever start a product based business and, and again, we'll take shoes as an example, just because this is the thing that I know how, like Google search uh, places in <laughs> Russia that make shoes, like it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, like these factories uh, are in fair I haven't had nowhere. To do that. Yeah, they they have no internet presence. Like maybe they got on a directory listing at some point if they were smart, but most are not that savvy. And so you know, unless you know someone whose like uncle owns it, you're just not you're not getting it. You're SOL. Yeah, that makes sense. Shit out of luck for our viewers. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for describing every acronym. Yeah. I mean... You're like the acronym savant. I just feel like a dick using acronyms because, you know, you're, you're <clears throat> using letters for a thing that you should just say. And I just did it, and I, I felt like a jerk, sure. so I defined it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. If someone doesn't know SOL, then they probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what about That's JWF? SOL on JWF, <laughs> do you know that one? No. Jolly well fucked. <laughs> no, I've never heard of that one. Maybe I shouldn't be listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what about okay, uh, Bohica? I'm going to use that from now on. <laughs> do, do you know Bohica? Bohica? It's an old World no. War II acronym. Bend over, here it comes again for like when you're in a bombing raid. No. <laughs> yeah. I, what about the only Fubar? World War Two ones? Uh, Fubar, yeah. That's a World um, War Two one. Fucked, uh, uh, fucked up beyond all, uh, bar beyond all recognition. You got it. Yeah, that's it. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's, some of those have made it into common culture of the. Bufukta or whatever you said Bohica. has not. Yeah, I promise you, that's not a thing. It is a thing, but it may not be known by you at this point in time. <laughs> it's, it's okay. 
Now I you know. Their... If you don't know, now you know. The quote Biggie Smalls. <laughs> the late, great you know, Biggie Smalls. <laughs> you don't know, now you know. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, so where I, where I left off is we, um, we had settled on a country. Uh, we went down there for a, um, uh, for a trade show that was... <clears throat> so for... There is a region in Mexico that, that is very well known for footwear, and they have two trade shows a year. One for finished products, i.e., here is a shoe, <clears throat> there's all these shoes, come work with me, I will make you your shoes, okay? That's one trade show, don't remember what it's called. Is that like a white label um, or is that something different? Like here's a reference product. No, it's, it's basically, it's A, white label, and B is we've made this, if you want some, if you like the quality of our work, we can make your Got thing. it. So it's, it's like fin finished goods. Um, so that, that's one, um, and, and they happen at um, opposite ends of the year. So one is in like know, November, and the other one is in like April or something. I, I'm making this up, but it, but it's but they're sure. they're two different times. So so there's a finished goods um, con uh, trade show, and then one is for suppliers, which is like here we make steel toes like. This is the thing. Here's like 10 million laces. Here's like all of these insoles, <laughs> a, a bunch of different things. And so we happen to be at the point of year where the one that was closest to us, and, and we weren't going to waste time, was the one with like That's for awesome. manufacturers, not for finished goods. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. But we were like, yeah, we like, you know, um, what's the what's the idiom? Uh, something the metal while it's hot. Um, strike while the iron's hot. Strike while the iron's hot. Okay, I was translating it from Russian. Um, it's totally di it's somewhat different in Russian. Um, what is it yeah. in Russian? If I can ask, I, I know it's a tangent, but I like tangents on this show. It is actually it means the same thing, but it's kui železa пока горячо. So it's uh, it, it's like smith the iron w w while it's hot. <laughs> That's amazing. It's one word different. I don't know why I couldn't figure that out. Yeah. Um, but what that means, yeah, right, so is back in the day, people used to put stuff in a fire to get it hot, and then they would have to hit it to do blacksmithing. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, also, once again, I feel like if you have to explain that, the person listening to this that doesn't know that it, it's probably fun. shouldn't it, be it's listening. It's fun to get into that stuff, Dima. Like, you got to realize, <laughs> like, it's just it's just kind of neat to be able to go back to first principles every now and then, you know? Like, that's, I, that's one of the reasons I, do, I, I enjoy do making agree. I, I would also question whether you think Gen Zers or whoever ends up being your target audience doesn't <laughs> know what blacksmithing is. Uh, clearly, they've all played RuneScape or whatever the. I, I'm in a date. Myself. I haven't played God RuneScape because I'm too old for that. <laughs> you're not too old. You're my age, and yes, it. Can, I was literally one of the first. I've had business partners I don't know, that, have played it that are younger than that me. Played RuneScape. What was that? I've had business partners five years younger than me that have played it. <laughs> exactly, you're behind times. Get get into blacksmithing. I'm an old man. This is <laughs> this is how I just this is drink how my I learned what and, iron uh... ore was. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Um, you you've thrown me. Oh yeah. Anyway, um, trade show. So we're at this trade show. Um, no one speaks English. Well, I'm exaggerating. I'm sure there were people, but we didn't meet them. So we would come up to <laughs> suppliers. And um, at that point, we were just looking for, I don't know, we were getting ideas, we were looking for materials, we weren't looking for a manufacturer necessarily. And um, this guy would just, and, and also, I, for those that don't know, Mexican Spanish is really fast. Like, it's significantly faster than every other Spanish. <laughs> so... You, We'd like come up to a booth and this guy would get super excited and he would just like, just word salad. And it wasn't even a word salad. It's a word <laughs> salad bar. 
for like three minutes. I, I remember there was one. I, I don't remember what he, what his actual product was, but it got to a point where I wanted to start laughing because I was so like, I can pick up a few words and if it's slow, I can pick up the majority of it, but not at that speed. So I was like, well, I have zero idea what he's talking about. And he's very vocal and he's very adamant and he's super <laughs> excited about his thing. And I have no idea what he's talking about. And I'm looking over at Anna and I'm like, Do, I'm like, I hope you understand. And she, anyway, we reconvened yeah, after she didn't yeah. understand shit. Um, <laughs> so at the end of the whole thing, we were like, we're like nodding and we're like, Oh, and the only thing that, you, well, the only thing that I thought of that you could say at the end of that whole thing is, do you have a business card? <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> so, Three minutes um, of spiel. Out, <laughs> that's all he got. Out of that, that worked out great. I, it kept his level of excitement. He felt like he made the sale. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and we moved on. <laughs> Did you go with that guy? I'm guessing not. No! Why? Well, I still have no idea what he was selling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but th this is the joys of dealing with, uh, yeah, with, with, with international manufacturing. Business. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. So, so that, was, that was fun, but w we were working with a... Uh, um, an agent, which is kind of like a liaison between you and like the dominant culture, wherever you are. And that guy was super helpful. He took us to like seven different factories and we met all these folks and, you know, we, we saw like the working conditions and we were like, mm, this is not, I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. We was, felt that way about a certain company when I was at another company that I can't mention. But um, it was a sweatshop, and so we went in there, and Got it. it was very clearly a sweatshop, and we we're just like, mm. <laughs> you, just, you don't know. That sucks. Yeah. Are they still a client? Um, this was not an SKA client. This was at a previous corporate job, which is why I'm so hesitant to say. Right, so who cares? Or you think they may be a client in the future? <laughs> it's a really big um, litigious company I used to work for that I feel okay. like would make my life very difficult if I said bad shit about them. Hold, hold, hold up your phone if you agree that that's the company. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I get crap on, on an I'm, earlier episode I'm, I'm from, from my editor for saying a couple of things and then our lawyer agreed, uh, like general counsel, right? And I'm like- Lo ah, look, First like of all, lawyers myself. always agree with everything. They're the biggest pansies in the world. <laughs> It's horrendous. Yeah, the risk like, tolerance on like, a fucking lawyer is pretty low. I'll agree you know, with you on that. They'd be like, you know what, Spencer? Just uh, during the podcast, just uh, say your name, introduce the guest, and then just shut up for the rest of the episode. That'd be fantastic. Just let's do that. <laughs> if I asked her, that's probably what she would say. Yeah. Why? Why incriminate? Or uh, no, not incriminate. Whatever the libel yourself. Whatever it's. Whatever it is. Incriminate, I think, is well. You know, what I mean, well, get yourself into shit. I mean, like, why put yeah. yourself in a bad situation? Yeah, no, that's true. Um, so that's well, the, and that's um, it. I mean, it, I hate tale. it because I'm such a proponent of free speech and and the lack of censorship. And you know mm -hmm. me. I mean, you know this is what I believe in and what I feel like. But it has been putting me in a very awkward position lately, where. We're making this. Well, but content. you should you you shouldn't compromise your your morals and your values over the sake of what you know whatever it is. Not getting sued out of existence is a. But I don't thing. think it's getting sued. I mean, who knows? You know, well, li not necessarily li sued. So, thing. I mean, th there's a lot of tactics an adversary can use when they want to screw you over, for lack of a better term. And, and one is a lawsuit, and they, and they can file harassing suits, even if you're not legally in the wrong. But another one is um, just defamation. And defamation you can sue for, but you can work in a way where it's kind of difficult to pin you down. And if you have a large enough budget for legal, you can just harass mm -hmm. somebody until they give in. I mean, there's famous examples. So, like, 
I think we talked about Lenny Bruce earlier, right? Which is that comedian yeah. that, you know, spoke his mind and said some things that needed to be said, in my opinion, and, and ended up dying because of it in a way. I mean, he died with a needle in his arm from his own doing, from, from heroin. Mm. But the fact of the matter was, I mean, the man said whatever he wanted to say, and he pissed off a lot of people, and eventually, you know, just there was vindictive prosecution, and he got, got, he got attacked over and over and over again, you know, certain police in certain areas, in every area, really, would, would come after him, and, and he just he ended mm-hmm. up with nothing because of that, and so... I want to be that guy, you know. I, I I'm somewhere in the middle. I I'm idealistic, but I'm also you know pragmatic, and so I, I try to. You, be... You're you're just uh, you're just biding your time until you got that fu money, and then you can you can really let loose on the world. We'll see. <laughs> I I sense a little bit of Mark Cuban in you. So yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, it, nobody knows, right? I mean, like, it depends, you know, what our fiscal year looks like in the year after that. But I, I'm not necessarily going to hurt anybody. I mean, I don't want to demolish anybody's career or, or, you know, shake the, the pot too much. But I value sincerity. That's a big and important stir, thing to me. Stir the pot, not shake the pot. Thank you. I don't want to stir the pot too much. <laughs> But I value sincerity, and so if I can behave in a way that's that's just honest, you know, and, and tells a real story, I mean, that's that's important to me, and and I feel better yeah. about myself at the end of the day, and I feel better about you know the business that that I engage in. If I'm honestly that that approach has been good for SKA because we're more upfront about our our abilities and also our our shortcomings we tend to do a lot better i mean people appreciate mm. that i think and you tend to close sales if you you know are just up front and you know you demonstrate experience by knowing your shortcomings that's awesome and i mean look at me i you're the only robotics company that i know outside of like uh boston dynamics uh, <laughs> and and as I know, they don't make any commercially viable things. They just make cool stuff. Maybe the spot. The spot's their first commercial offering. Is that the dog? So the big dog was their first dog. They have a bunch of uh, quadrupeds. But the spot, uh, quadruped meaning having four legs, but the spot is... Um, I hate you so much. <laughs> did they fuck with you intentionally? If you... <laughs> But like the um, the spot is a um, you know it's it's you can tell there's there's injection molded bits on it um, you know it's mm-hmm. it's got some industrial design behind it it's it's a product it's meant for for a wider audience than than just like the big dog and and they're commercializing it and they've been you know hitting the trade events really hard um, in in 2019 2020 and. 2021 moving that product um and they've been doing a good job it's a sweet product i've driven them uh, over the mm-hmm. internet and um I'll, i'm gonna say it's it's a pleasure to drive a spot they're awesome big fan like them a lot good also here's how i know that you're full of shit on first principles thinking uh you didn't define what injection molded was <laughs> so i feel like you failed am i full of shit or is that just an omission that anybody could make on three glasses of whiskey uh, unknown, but also there's a lot more people that don't know what injection molding is that know what a quadruped is. <laughs> I'm willing to stake my reputation on that. <laughs> You're probably right, sir. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just trying my best like everybody else here. Good. You should be. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah. You ask poignant questions, which is good. I appreciate so it. So I, I, I gave you the origin story of... Um, when you mentioned kind of how we've seen <clears throat> the guy you didn't go with. But, I mean, do you have a little more time? Can we go into, like, who you ended up going with and how that worked out? Yeah, we, um, <clears throat> we actually randomly found the, the type of toe cap that we thought would work best 
for um, you know for our specific shoes at this trade conference. And the the guy that was there said, um, I actually know a company who uses this exact toe cap to make something that's stylish but for men. And we said, oh, that's fantastic. We should probably meet them. <clears throat> and they weren't there, but the guy said, um, well, you know, I I'll text the guy. Maybe he'll come later today or he'll come tomorrow. You know, it'd be cool if you could meet him. And so then, you know, later that day, the dude showed up and I stopped back by the booth and he was like, meet this guy. The guy had a fantastic English. I was like, oh my God. You know, I told him about the concept and he was very excited. And, if, you know, the next place we went from there was directly to their headquarters. Nice. Um, and so we talked to their head engineer. We're like, here are the rough, because we had... Um, we had tech packs of what we wanted to make, which are, um, they're like, you can call them like detailed engineered drawings. Um, and so we're like, this is what we're thinking. What do you think? And they were like, absolutely, this is doable. Um, you know, we can y use these this type of toe cap that we're thinking and away we went from there. That's awesome. So you started from a toe cap and then you just built an entire shoe around it, it sounds like. Well, and this is the, um, I'll call it, I mean, this is the, the rate limiting factor, maybe you can call it. Um, but also this is, this is the, the net benefit is if you are a big company and you are publicly traded and you're trying to move units because you need to show a certain level of profitability, um, it behooves you to make as big, it, it behooves you to make a product that is as universally fitting as possible because you can make a lot of it and, and move a lot more units to a lot more people. You have a white foot, you have a narrow foot, you have a whatever, ah, all good, we got you. Um, when you start making something that's narrower, and that's a little more style focused, not only are you now, um, you know, it's increasing the complexity wherein now maybe you have to size up because, because the toe area is, it, you know, is tighter than, than what you're used to. But also there's going to be more people who are going to put it on and say, well, this is snug versus every other steel so that I've ever tried. I feel like I'm just in a vacuum. Um, so th that's the, th again, that's the blessing and the challenge of dealing with something that's like almond shaped and m much more stylish in nature. That's cool. Uh, some people think so. I like to think I do. I mean, so I, after you. No. I, I never I never thought that I'd be on a podcast talking about shoe construction or design principles, but um, life works in mysterious ways, and this is why I love being alive. To me, at least, with my mind, it's been mm -hmm. beautiful to see, you know, the, the details and, and the... Um, the logistics that go into making something happen in real life. And so that's, that's, that's the story I'm trying to tell. And, and I appreciate you being a part of it. And everyone has a different journey. Um, ours was a lot more hands-on and very focused on making something that we wanted. Again, you know, if you white label something, there's not a lot of thinking that goes into that. You, you get a finished thing, you figure out where you want to put your logo, you're done you know, it goes out the door. Um, but you don't have a lot of say in customization. So in this case, I mean, it's something that was, it went from nothing, from absolute scratch to to a finished product. And it's, um, it's an amazing feeling. It's like, you know, I don't have any kids, but I, I feel like it's maybe a stepping stone to, to that is that you, you made something. I mean, I don't have kids either, and, and it's kind of silly to speculate on this with both of us being the way we are, but <laughs> I feel like SK is the closest thing I have to a kid. I mean, it's 
I'll there it is. I'll lay my life down for it. I mean, it's it's you know it's, it's something I care very much about, and I've worked very hard to bring into fruition, and you know I, I care about it deeply, <laughs> you yeah. know, and so that's what people describe having kids, and so it seems to correlate. <clears throat> As you should. I mean, think about the the amount of time and energy that you've put into a thing. And this is what you know when you when you work in a corporate job um, that's not necessarily a startup or a small business. It doesn't feel like you're moving the needle. At least this is how I felt um, working in corporate for my entire career. Um, and whenever you do try to do something, there's you know fifty nine levels of bureaucratic you know hurdles which are everyone's always trying to stop you so that that gets annoying sometimes and you know maybe doing something crazy and risky and um something that's not been done before is something that makes sense yeah. but it is scary and you don't know you know if you're going to get a paycheck out of it i mean that's the tough thing it's funny you say that because I, I just interviewed the head of the Pittsburgh Robotics Network and he was talking about how, you know, you, um, he's run a lot of startup companies and he said your goal is to get to Series A because you can pay people almost a living wage. <laughs> so, it's funny you say that, you know, and he talks about being a consultant to make, you know, like I was making almost market, you know, <laughs> it's it's true. I mean, I, I like, you know, the the cavalier nature, the... I mean, not cavalier, but the just being able to the creative freedom of you know you can you can utilize a bigger part of your brain to bring people's visions to fruition than mm-hmm. if you were more pigeonholed and, and constrained in a way where you couldn't really get the whole machine going and, and be as valuable. I agree. No, it's a uh, it's rewarding, but it's also you know it doesn't. The work never stops. It doesn't stop on the weekends. Of course. Um, I have, you know. I, I've pulled a double all night over the last two weekends of my life. Like, I mean, I stay yeah, up I mean, Thursday that's, night that's and Friday healthy. night, and then I get to sleep Saturday to Sunday, and then I worked all day Sunday. But if you're, if you're doing something where you feel like it's, it's driving you toward a goal, then it's worthwhile because Absolutely. You, I don't, you, you feel fulfilled. Um, yeah, nice feeling. It's a good feeling indeed. And I mean, it, it, the reason I make those sacrifices and I work the way I do is, is because of that, you know? I mean, I, I really, I feel like I'm working towards something bigger and it feels good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. So I know that there's not, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we didn't end up covering that was Probably core operations related. Um, we can do another you know, one. Fulfillment, fulfillment, working with 3PLs, and I, I don't know, a whole bunch of shipping, uh, tariffs, you name it. Um, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of topics that don't, don't end up making it into the, uh, into the origin story. All this stuff you could write a book on. I mean, it, it is so much information <laughs> and... Do you want to just come back in a month or so, and, and we'll do another one of these podcasts? Um, if uh, I, how about this? We'll, we'll, we'll see what kind of uh, <laughs> what kind of response the the first recording gets <laughs> to see if, uh, if if there's any interest in watching two Jews talk to each other. <laughs> Hey, if you like what you just saw, please smash that like button, click subscribe. It's your support that'll let us keep doing this. We can improve our production value, start releasing these more often. The more people like it, the more of these we're gonna put out. So if you like it, subscribe, tell your friends. Thank you so much, you're the best.